Well, I guess the best place to start in the discussion of infectious diseases is the lowest part of the evolutionary uh, tree. It's so low in the evolutionary tree, uh, it is a substance which doesn't even have DNA, and they're called prions, and prions are infectious particles. Prion stands for uh, pry and on for a proteinaceous infectious particle. Uh, it's a substance that causes a variety of uh, central nervous system uh, diseases, infectious diseases, in uh, both uh, non-humans as well as humans. In uh, non-humans, we hear of BSE or bovine spongy encephalitis being in cows and cattle. And there's also diseases in sheep and other animals. And in humans, we hear of CJD or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, formerly called JCD, Jakob Creutzfeldt disease. It's probably more politically correct to call it CJD, however, because there is another JC virus of the central nervous system we'll talk about a little bit later. Prions are protein particles. You could see here, here's an exact chemical structure in the diagram. Here's a, a scanning electron microscope. They have a very specific thing. They somehow can <clears throat> replicate and infect and cause sometimes fatal diseases in humans. Another human disease was called Kuru. And when certain tribes of uh, uh, people were eating and cannibalizing one another. They noticed that there was a wasting disease followed by uh, central nervous system uh, symptoms and death, and that was called Kuru. So in humans, only a CJD and Kuru are the common uh, diseases. There's a couple of others. And in cattle, BSE. Uh, the bottom line is that microscopically, both BSE in cows as well as Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease in humans has the same appearance. And this is what it looks like. And we're going to blow this thing up and show you that this is a brain. You can see neurons here and 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 here. The rest of these are glial cells. But the one thing that you notice is that in the uh, myelinated uh, matter, there are these spongy little holes. That's why. Uh, the BSE, the S stands for spongiosis. It's because the central nervous system takes on a spongy appearance due to the infection by these non-DNA infectious protein particles. Uh, that's about all we'll say for the non-DNA form of uh, infectious diseases. Let's move up higher to the next uh, level, viruses. Viruses are pretty small. The very, very largest one is uh, less than half of a micron. If you remember, the diameter of a red cell is seven microns. So in all practicality, uh, they are not visible to routine uh, microscopy. Sometimes some of their uh, effects are, however, not only just the inflammatory effects, but some of the protein effects may cause certain intranuclear or intracytoplasmic uh, inclusions. Viruses are either DNA or RNA. They have a core around their genome. They are not naked DNA and RNA unless they're uh, unraveling inside your cell. And the core uh, may be, the DNA may be a single or double-stranded technically, so that's another way of classifying viruses. And uh, most viruses have a capsid uh, surrounding that core. In fact, they all do, uh, which they call the protein coat. Sometimes, in a little bit higher level of viruses, there's another lipid interface surrounding the protein called an envelope. Uh, most viruses have a fairly limited number of genes coding for all the necessary proteins they need to do their pathogenicity thing. And uh, if you remember with the AIDS virus, there's probably less than 20 common genes that have names that code for common uh, antigens, common expressions of that in terms of uh, protein structure or function in the virus itself. There is no consistent naming system for viruses. I'm sure someday there will be, and we'll all have to learn a new nomenclature. But for now, 
we have to go by the old system and they generally are not logical. So uh, practically speaking in pathology, the best way to classify viruses is by a system. So we talk about respiratory viruses or digestive viruses or skin eruptions or perhaps hematologic viral disorders or arboviruses and hemorrhagic fevers, warty viruses, central nervous system viruses. Those are the common classifications of viruses. And uh, let's start out with respiratory. Now, once again, we're not going to go into the actual uh, full a pathogenicity of all these diseases, we're going to talk about things that you should generally know uh, in a casual kind of a way. And when we get to the actual systems, we may very well go into these in greater uh, um, detail. Here are the common names for the viruses here on the left in red. These are the actual taxonomic viral names. This tells you whether it's single or double-stranded, DNA or RNA. These are things you probably don't really need to know. But what you should know is that the general category or the generic name for viruses, should, you should know the general category of diseases that they cause. For example, adenoviruses you should think of as being associated with uh, respiratory tract infections, both upper as well as lower, which is lung. Uh, conjunctivitis diarrhea, rhinoviruses, you know, probably the single most uh, likely virus to cause the common cold. Coxsackie viruses involved in a whole bunch of uh, situations. For example, uh, pleurodynia, herpangina, which is a form of uh, upper respiratory infection, hand, foot, and mouth disease in humans, which is not at all related to the cattle a hoof and mouth disease. And I'm not too sure if SARS really should be on this list. I think SARS would probably more uh, likely and correctly be part of the coronaviruses, which is a uh, upper respiratory infection. You remember there was a SARS infection in China a few years ago, which was very scary and some people died. Uh, you should know that the influenza viruses are the single biggest cause of uh, pneumonias in adults, and uh, respiratory syncytial viruses are a, a very, very common cause for a bronchitis, a bronchiolitis, and extension of that, a pneumonia, chiefly in children. So uh, if you can kind of associate the common name here on the left in red with the general categories of diseases they cause, we'll kind of think of those as viruses, and we won't go into them in too much detail right now. Digestive viruses, well, you know mumps, which is uh, technically paramyxoviridae, is a single-stranded RNA, causes mumps. Mumps is a parotitis, that's digestive gland, isn't it? Also pancreatitis and orchitis. Rotavirus, probably number one cause of viral diarrhea. Norwalk agent, another gastroenteritis. And then we have our whole family of hepatitis viruses, which certainly apply for the digestive system as well. Please note that whether you're talking about hepatitis A, B, C, D, or E, they are not at all in the same taxonomic classification. They're all different viruses. Most of them are RNA. Hepatitis B is DNA. Most of them are single-stranded. Hepatitis B is double-stranded, but notice they all express a pattern of acute or chronic hepatitis, and they all have a completely different uh, type of uh, uh, clinical behavior. Well, I just got the beep that I have the one-minute more uh, warning, so let's go uh, continue with the uh, skin viruses in the next uh, block, and I thank you very